Hello everyone! Are you considering a visit to Sofia, Bulgaria and seeking insights into the city's ambiance and attractions? Well, you've come to the right place. Welcome to Sofia, the vibrant capital city of Bulgaria. Join us on a journey through its rich history and captivating sights. We'll visit the majestic Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, a symbol of Sofia's cultural and religious heritage. Sofia's past comes alive as we explore the Roman ruins of Serdica, once a thriving ancient city. Wander through the excavated streets, marvel at the remnants of Roman baths, and imagine life in this bustling metropolis centuries ago. From its ancient landmarks to its vibrant cultural scene, Sofia enchants visitors with its blend of history and natural beauty. Come discover the allure of Bulgaria's capital city and immerse yourself in Sofia's fascinating story. Be sure to watch until the end to find out what we wish we knew before coming to Sofia and what we would have done differently. Before we get started, I just want to say thanks for watching our video. It really means a lot to us. We are over halfway to our goal of 1,000 subscribers, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. Hit that like button and share our videos. That would really help us a lot. I'm standing in front of the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral, a Orthodox uh, Christian cathedral here in Sofia, and this building is absolutely enormous. I can't emphasize a big I can't emphasize enough just how big this building is, this cathedral. And this is the symbol of Sophia. It's the most photographed point. And if you get a postcard or you see a picture from Sophia, almost 100% of the time it's going to have this cathedral in it. Now, it's not very old. It was only built in the early 20th century. And it was built to honor General Nevsky, who is a Russian general. And what he did was he helped defeat the Ottomans and drive them out to Bulgaria. So Bulgaria was under Ottoman rule for about 500 years. And, um, uh, and the Russian general Nevsky, he, he played a key role in the battle that eventually drew the, uh, drove the Ottomans out of Bulgaria. So the cathedral is named for him. Now, there were a couple years, I, I believe it was uh, right during or right after World War I, when Bulgaria and Russia were kind of uh, at odds of each other, and they changed the name for about two years, and if you have to forgive me, I can't remember uh, what the name of it was, but it was to honor the two um, men who created the, the Cyrillic alphabet. And so in Bulgarian language, they use the Cyrillic alphabet uh, just like uh, uh, Russians do and, and a couple of other places. Now, a lot of people will mistakenly call that the Russian alphabet, but it is not the Russian alphabet, it is the Cyrillic alphabet, and Bulgarians will be quick to point out your error because they're very proud that two, two men from their country created that alphabet. I'm standing in one of the most important spots of both ancient and modern Sofia, Bulgaria. So right behind me is the church of Aya Sofia, same name as the famous church, mosque, museum in Istanbul. But this church is from the 4th century, so it is very old. And how, how this affected the city of Sofia, um, we're, it's kind of strange because we're actually out a little bit out, outside of the, the former um, walled ancient city. But as people would come in to town in the ancient times, the first thing they would see would be this church. And they would look at it and, you know, and, and they would say, ah, Sophia, you know, and they would just say Sophia as they came in. And so year after year and century after century of people coming in and, and saying, ah, Sophia, then somehow that got attached to the city and basically transferred over to the city's name. So it is um, uh, now we, we've known it uh, as Sophia for, for centuries, um, not the former name of Sertica. And so it's kind of funny, the name of the city, uh, it, it was kind of forgotten how the city got its name through, through time. And uh, if you go in the middle of downtown, there's a big column with a statue of St. Sophia. And you talk about an ultimate failure of city planners. 
um, where that column is and statue is, formerly there was a, during a, um, the socialist times, there was a statue of Vladimir Lenin, the uh, socialist communist leader. And so they tore that down and they, they wanted to replace it with something for the millennium. So in 2000, preparing for 2000, they put that statue up, the column with the statue of St. Sophia, and they didn't even realize that that is not who the city is named after. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, uproar, but they left it there. So you still can see a, a statue of St. Sophia, even though that is not who the city got its name for. And behind me, we have the eternal flame of Bulgaria. And uh, the saying is that as long as this flame continues to burn, Bulgaria will exist. And underneath it, there's a tomb that contains um, earth from all regions of Bulgaria and the mortal remains of unknown soldiers who were lost fighting for Bulgaria. They just found this in like 2010, so this is all a relatively new discovery, but like 3,000 years of Roman history right underneath the grounds of Sophia, and yeah, up here we've got a Roman path, and all of this is genuine, it's like where it was laying when the Romans put it down, so pretty spectacular, and you can see the, the columns and the statues that are that they discovered here, so pretty phenomenal. Uh, you know, and think about this, this is like a museum, but it's really just the subway station. So you walk to the subway station and you're walking through an ancient Roman museum. Pretty cool. All right, so this is the actual Roman road and everything's in place as the Romans had left it and it was buried for thousands of years until they dug it up in 2010 when they were making the subway station. And so I've been told if you look at a Roman road like this, the big stones, if it's a road that has big, big stones like this, then that means it was a pretty important road and had pretty high traffic on there. And I guess the most important roads were made like that, so, you know, the ride would be smoother for the chariots or whatever that was, that was going over it. So if you see a road that has smaller rocks from the Roman days, then I guess it wasn't a very important road. All right, what's up everybody? So I am standing on what's known as the Square of Tolerance here in Sofia, Bulgaria. And why do they call it the Square of Tolerance? Well, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna give you a little tour right now. So if you look over my left shoulder or right behind me, I guess, is the, uh, the Mosque of Sofia. So we've got Islam right there. We've got a tram going by. And then right over there, that dark dome, that is the Sof Sophia Synagogue. And over there behind you, in front of me, we've got an Orthodox Christian church. And just on the other side of the Orthodox Christian church, we have a Catholic church. And then down here, we have the ruins of the ancient Roman city of Serdica. And this was Thrace. That's from the fourth century BC. And right above me, we have McDonald's. So the good old religion of commercialism. So we've got Islam, Judaism, and two versions of Christianity all coexisting right here within a couple hundred meters of each other, coexisting peacefully. So folks, if we can do it here in Sofia, we can do it all over the world. All right, so welcome to ancient Thrace and the city of Serdica, otherwise known as modern day Sofia, Bulgaria. 
So if you ever watched the old series Spartacus, and when they talked about Spartacus the gladiator and they referred to him, referred to him as Thracian or coming from Thrace, and you wondered, where the heck is Thrace? Well, it's here in today's Bulgaria. And so what I'm setting on here, these are what's left or some of the ruins that's left of Roman Serdica. And this is a very expansive complex here. It's quite large, but they only discovered it in 2010, 2012 when they were digging the subway lines here. So they, they would dig and they kept finding these Roman ruins. And so now it's set up and you can walk through when you walk through the subway, it's like you're walking through a museum. It's really fantastic. There's Roman roads there. And then we have this. It's, it's really, really cool, really spectacular. And what they've done, so they came down and they found like a certain level and they wanted to protect it. And they also wanted to look kind of realistic, I guess. So when you come here to Sophia and you're in these ruins, you see this like reddish pinkish line. This like marks kind of what's real and what's not. So anything below this line is what was here. That was That's what was standing when they discovered this complex. And anything above that line, they've added to it for protection and to give it a sense of realism. So when you're in Sofia, if you like Roman artifacts and if you like Roman history, it's a great place to come visit. Okay, so we are at the, uh, the public springs, the public hot springs here in Sofia, Bulgaria. And this is the place where the water coming out is body temperature, I guess right around 98 degrees, a little bit warmer than 98 degrees Fahrenheit. And people come, they bring water containers and they fill up big jugs of water to take them home. Sounds like we got the call to prayer coming from the mosque. And so, yeah, so locals bring this water and it's supposed to have real health benefits supposed to be good for your internal organs, good for your skin, your joints. I guess whatever ails you, this is supposed to be good for it. So I'm going to fill my cup up and try some of this natural hot springs water here in Sofia. Mmm. Smells good. Oh man. I feel younger. My back doesn't hurt. Hips feel good. That is some high quality H2O right there, buddy. Mm. And did you know that Bulgaria has the second highest concentration of natural hot springs of any country in the world? Do you know which country has the highest number of hot springs in the world? You guessed it right. Iceland. That's right. Iceland has, is the only country that has more hot springs than Bulgaria does. So right here in Sofia, enjoying the natural hot springs mineral water. Mm -mm. <sighs> Some Roman ruins underneath the Sofia Mosque. And across the street, that building, that big building is the, the city market, an indoor shopping area, traditional city market. It's not open right now. I think it's undergoing renovations, but uh, uh, I've seen pictures. It looks really nice. So hopefully when you visit Sophia, it'll be open again. Sophia Cathedral of the Orthodox Christian faith. And right now, it has a bunch of flowers out here, um, basically in remembrance of the, um, the leader of the Orthodox Church recently passed away. And so these flowers are in memorial of him and they are in the process of selecting a new church leader. Now, one thing I do not know, I'm not sure if, and if someone out there knows, you can put it in the comments. Does the Orthodox Christian Church, does it have one leader over all of um, the Orthodox churches, kind of like 
the Pope for Catholic churches? Or does each region have its own leader? So uh, our tour guide described him as the Pope, but I don't know if he's like the Pope for all of Orthodox churches or just the Bulgarian Orthodox churches. If you know, please drop us a comment. Good morning, walking along the yellow brick roads of Sofia, which were put in in the early 20th century with bricks from the Austro-Hungarian Empire, financed through Germany, and a little controversial because I guess the traction is terrible when it's wet, and a lot of people want to get rid of them, but right now they are kind of a symbol of Sofia, the yellow brick road. I don't know if there's a connection between these yellow bricks and the Wizard of Oz. So if anyone knows that, um, let us know in the comments. So now we are standing in, basically inside the presidential complex in Sofia. At, when you come into this courtyard, now I'm within the old Roman bath complex. And so there's a lot of cool ruins around here. You can just come stroll around. And the building behind me, this rotunda church, it's a um, um, Orthodox uh, Christian church. And it is considered the oldest building in Sofia. And originally it was part of the, the bath house, but later converted into a church. It has some really cool mosaics from the 12th and 13th centuries in there on the the wall so worth going in and taking a peek inside and just strolling around these cool ruins is also worth your time too and also you can catch at certain times of the day I'm not sure what the times are but you can catch the changing of the guard ceremony outside of out front of the presidential complex so here in Sofia stop by the presidential presidential complex and visit this nice Roman bath area what we wish we knew and what we would do differently we spent six nights in Sofia and took day trips to Plovdiv and the Rila Monastery. In hindsight, we feel that Plovdiv deserves more time. There is just so much to see and do. And we felt really rushed during our time there. If we did it again, we would rent a car and evenly divide our time between Sofia and Plovdiv. If you are interested in exploring Sofia's culinary delights, be sure to watch next Sunday for our Sofia culinary tour.